Hello there and welcome back to another video. Today guys we are here inside of part 2 of the how to make a clicker simulator game. In today's video we'll be covering rebirths, we'll be making a rebirth menu where the player can actually rebirth and get a multiplier on their clicks and also be awarded gems which we'll show you, I'll show you guys what they'll be able to go in and spend their gems on in a future video guys. This one is going to be a little bit of a long one over here but do not worry guys because I'm going to make it as simple as possible for you all. We may actually need to do a little bit more with rebirths in the next video but if I were to do all in this one it'll be a little bit long so do not worry about anything guys. All will be fully working in a few um, episode times in a few episodes time before i actually start anything off over here and show you guys is exactly how you can start making your rebirths menu um and rebirths feature i first need to go in and tell you guys a little bit about rblxcodes.com which is my own roblox code website where you can find out game codes music codes and guides there is tons of stuff in there that you guys have to check out overall we give a code for about 300 roblox games so if you guys need a code for a game it will be there anyway guys i guess let's just go ahead and go on into this video now so what are we gonna want to go ahead and do first well first things first guys we want to make a few more leader stats over here guys so what we're going to go in and do we're going to open up our leader stats um file that we actually made in a previous in the previous episode and we're going to go ahead and create two new data stores over here so i'm going to call this local rebirths data store equals data store service get data store i'm just going to name this rebirths one over here guys i think right this may not be a fresh one so i'm just gonna name this rebirths um i don't know i honestly guys i'm gonna rebirths with two like that many s's guys because I, I was experimenting with this a little bit before so i may have already overrided a few of these i want this to be from scratch guys just name these whatever you want them to be um anyway next we're gonna do local gems data store equals data store service get data store and i'm just gonna name this gems um, just so that guys there we go keep in mind all of these scripts are going to be on my patreon account which you can find linked down below in the pinned comment of today's video okay guys next over here what we're going to go ahead and do right now we're going to actually create these values right now so what i recommend you guys doing this is copy and paste in this um you can probably do this twice to be honest and for this one it's going to be called rebirths um keep this the same but it's going to be rebirths dot name over there and we're gonna call this rebirths over here guys there we go and then we're gonna do the same thing here but for gems and um, so gems 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 and then gems with a capital g right now guys okay so we got this over here next so we here we are we load the clicks data however guys we actually want to load the rebirths data and also the gems data how do we do this guys well i'm gonna go to comment here loading um rebirths data this just allows us to easier see what's happening in the code and what i'm going to go in and do here guys i'm just going to quickly copy and paste this in because we there's no real point in retyping this all out when all we really need all we really need to do is change the names of some of these words over here so over here i'm going to put local rebirth data um rebirth data and then rebirth data over here rebirth data store um there we go guys and then if success then rebirths um dot value equals rebirth data over here guys i'm not going to explain exactly what is happening here in the leader stats store um leader stats script guys just because of the fact that um i did explain what all this was doing in the last video guys so yeah, if you want to know exactly what this is all doing feel free to go ahead and rewatch the last video anyway guys next we're going to go ahead and do here local um loading sorry gems data right now and then again i'm going to copy and paste this in but this time i'm going to replace rebirths with gems over here guys so local rebirth data is now to gems data put this in over here guys and then gems data store sorry guys this should be data store not data there we go um and then we're gonna do gems data and gems there we go guys okay so we got that over there now we're going to be saving the data over here so over here i'll put saving clicks over here guys we're going to want to go ahead and do another one underneath here saving rebirths um there we go guys and then i'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this in so local rebirths value um equals dot leader stats dot rebirths and then we're going to go ahead and do rebirths data store and then rebirths the value there we go guys okay so we're saving the rebirths right now this should all be good um and then we're gonna go ahead and save the gems so oops not equals not not zeros <laughs> there we go saving gems um data and then we're gonna go ahead and oops 
didn't mean to copy that either um okay so gems value dot gems over here guys there we go all this is really doing is just changing the names of some um some stuff over here guys um this is definitely probably the easiest thing that'll be good that you'll be doing today guys because you pretty much have done all the work last video because all you need to do is just copy and paste really and anyway here we're gonna go and do gems value um, no, not gems data store value. There we go, guys. If I can actually type, there we go. Okay, so we're saving the gems right now, and then from here, essentially, guys, all we need to do is just copy and paste these two down into here right now, guys. There we go. This should all be good, and I'm gonna test out right now to see if this is saving properly. So if we go and go in the game right now. And actually, we look on the leaderboard. As you guys can see, we've now got clicks, rebirths, and gems. So if we then go ahead and go to the server to test this, guys, because on a client, we can't actually edit our leader stats. That's just to stop, like, people hacking the game and all that sort of stuff, guys. So for gems, just going to be this volume. Rebirths will have, like, 65. Clicks, I'll also update this over here, guys. So there we go. Let's switch back. As you guys can see, so this is my data right now. Let's now exit the game over here. Um, stop. And then let's play it in again. And this should have saved. Uh, yeah there we go guys it has saved which is awesome i'm just gonna quickly reset that back to zero right now guys because i do want to make it from scratch we can actually see what's going on a little bit later on once we are actually giving ourselves some rebirths which is awesome um right okay zero zero and zero there we go guys this should all be good and then i'll save right okay guys so we are ready we've got the basics right now guys and all we need to do now is actually make the rebirths menu itself right okay but first things first guys go to the replicate storage and in your remote events file add a new remote event over here um and name this rebirth i've already done this guys because again i was experimenting with um i was experimenting in, in this game how exactly to do this because i've not actually made one of these games before but i've got a really really good idea on how to actually make them guys so, yeah do not worry about that but um yeah rebirth add a new remote event in that remote for a remote events folder called rebirth right now Okay, next, what we're going to go ahead and do over here is actually make the GUI itself. So, we're going to add a text label over here. No, sorry, not text label. We're going to add a text button right now. And I'm going to call this rebirth button. Um, over here, guys, you know what? Actually, I do really like this. Well, I kind of want to make the match. And so, I'm just going to duplicate that. Sorry. And then I'm going to name this rebirth button. I'm just going to drag this over to the left of here so we can actually see it's, um, it's different. And then um, text is rebirth. There we go, guys. Okay, one second. I'm going to quickly delete all this over here because we'll save that for a little bit. Um, no, actually, we don't need the click detector, do we? Because we are actually um, going to be making something completely different out of that. So let's quickly delete this if I possibly can. There we go. I'm just going to quickly clear this, guys. Um, clear output because that's a little bit annoying right okay guys so we've got the rebirth button over here next we actually want to make the rebirth menu itself so add a frame in here and call this rebirth menu right now guys right honestly i have made one of these just before while i was testing this out this is probably going to be thing be the thing that takes you guys the longest amount of time to go ahead and do just because of the fact that making guis like menus itself making buttons is completely fine but making menus is a little bit more time consuming so i'm gonna quickly drag and drop this menu that i already made in it here hopefully um no never mind right apparently not one second i'll copy and paste that over there there it goes drag this in here right now and this is the rebirths menu that i made previously so right okay so in here i've called this rebirths menu um you guys don't need to make it the exact same size as me as long as it has the same layers as mine and um, you guys should be fine so i'll put a rebirth title over here with a background color of this just to make it stand out from the background over there guys a little bit more and um, yeah guys you don't need to make this exactly the same as mine as long as it has the same features then you'll all be good um but if you want to copy off the stuff over here guys just pause the video and feel free to do that that's what i've got for the rebirths menu setting for the frame um and this is for the text over here guys so just feel free to copy all this down if you guys really need to um over there i'm not gonna make this because honestly if i were to make this this video will probably be about 50 minutes or longer which we don't want but anyway guys okay so in here i've actually added a scrolling frame which we can use to scroll down for the rebirths because as the player progresses they're gonna have a lot more rebirths over here so this is my scrolling frame um my scrolling frame like settings over here guys if you really want to copy it um of course this menu looks absolutely disgusting right now guys you can make this a lot better 
this is not a tutorial on how to make really nice looking GUIs. I will be making one of those in the future, guys. It's quite easy to go and make really nice GUIs, so do not worry if you can't really make nice ones at the moment, guys, because if you stay tuned to this channel, well, it'll only be a few more months until you actually may be able to make professional GUIs, guys. So, yeah, do not worry about if your GUI doesn't look that good. To be honest, guys, it doesn't really need to look that good as long as it's a nice colour, I think. Um, it doesn't need to look fancy anyway guys okay so i've got this this for the scrolling frame that's probably give you guys enough time to actually check through all that um over here guys i've added a example thing over here so this right okay essentially right first things first i want to show you guys the ui grid layout so over here cell pattern that's just the um that's the distance between each cell over here so if i duplicate that over there guys that's just the difference between these two cells over here so yeah that's the cell pattern for you all and then cell size that is just this um box over here guys so i've put this at like six there we go that box extends and essentially guys that is what cell size is um and that's just gonna determine what this is over here do this in a ui grid layout that's just gonna allow us to add more rebirths let's say the per and the person goes to a rebirth shop which i'll be showing you guys next video let's say they go to a general shop and with their gems that they get from rebirths they can buy more buy more rebirth buttons whenever they buy a new one they'll get an extra one in here and so on and so on until eventually they get all um they get an absolute ton and um well fill up the whole thing over there guys anyway so we've got this one right now and in here i actually added a text button over here i deleted the text out of this because i actually wanted to display it both how many rebirths the player gets and also the cost of this so the cost of this is one rebirth and uh, no sorry the reward is one rebirth and they get 10 clicks essentially in here just um sorry about that guys i actually forgot i had that in there um right okay that should not be a problem i'm just gonna quickly copy and paste that put that away there guys because we'll be making one of those from scratch do not worry all the scripts we'll be making from scratch just the gui itself I think it probably takes too long and it's not really that hard to make them and uh, anyway guys so okay so i'll put a, a text button over here this has no text inside because i wanted to do this over here and i essentially split this up into two halves right now um one side was cost um, and that had the clicks over here guys make sure you do name these the same as me because it's just gonna make it a lot easier when coming to script all this now and next episode where i'll show you guys a bit more about this reverse menu um and also the rebirth amount one rebirth for there guys and yeah that's all i've done for that bit and that is the, the rebirth menu itself done and dusted so what we're gonna go ahead and do over here we're gonna quickly make this not visible and we're gonna quickly code what is gonna allow us to open and close this menu so um let's quickly close that down inside of the rebirth button over here add a local script and then you know guys you can name this whatever you want i'm just gonna name this open um rebirth menu there we go guys okay so over here i'm gonna do local button and um, button equals script dot parent rebirth menu uh and the, sorry local rebirth menu equals um button dot parent dot rebirth menu over here guys so we got the button which is the parent of the script so that's a rebirth button over here and to get the rebirth menu itself we've actually found the parent of the button which is the screen gui and then in the screen gui we search for the rebirth menu which we have then found here and honestly guys right you can change the name of the rebirth menus um like add objects and all sorts of stuff in it guys but when coming to script it and find wherever you've put it you guys need to actually address this name the same as that. So say I change my name of this to Rebirth Menu 5. I'd have to put 5 over here, guys. So it is matching. Just keep that in mind, guys, whenever um, but whenever doing this, if you guys are changing the names. um, Anyway, over here. So we're going to go in and do button dot mouse button one up, connect, function. And then after that, guys, uh, sorry, we're going to go in and do that. And then we're going to do if Rebirth Menu dot visible equals sorry equals equals true then rebirth menu dot visible equals if i can actually type equals false then we're going to go in and do else um else if rebirth rebirth menu dot visible equals equals false then rebirth menu dot um dot visible equals true i'm gonna quickly spell this right there we go guys okay what's happening here well we are checking first if um so what we've done whenever we click this we check if the rebirth 
menu is visible. If it is visible, meaning if it's on, it will then close the menu. And if it is closed, it will then open. So let's test, test this out, guys. It should be working right now. If we jump into the game um, and then click the rebirth button, this should be working. Um, there we go, guys. It's going to go ahead and open and close that right now. Okay, so what is next? Well, next, what we need to go ahead and do is actually go um inside of the scrolling frame right now and then so in this button over here guys this is the rebirth button the one that i actually deleted um over here we actually want to go ahead and make a thing that's going to allow us to send to the server a signal saying that the player has clicked the rebirth button and they want to rebirth so i'm just going to name this rebirth send right now guys we will be editing this code um next episode guys because this is just a basic right now all we're doing really is just making the basics of our rebirth feature giving us gems editing our multiplier and also just giving us rebirths and saving and all sorts of stuff guys but next video we'll actually be doing the ins and outs where we change the the cost of the rebirth depending on how many rebirths the player has and also how many rebirth buttons the player has as well guys so that shouldn't be too hard in the next video either so don't worry about that guys and if you are struggling again all this and um, you guys can receive help from me personally on my patreon account so if you guys want to go ahead and sign up to that that is down below in the pinned comment anyway guys okay um okay so over here we're gonna go ahead and do local rebirth um button right now equals script dot parent this is a different button comparing to this one over here guys this is this button over here the rebirth option that they actually click for example here it's one rebirth that's why i've named it one then we're gonna go ahead and do local replicated storage um equals game get service replicated storage right now guys after that so we've got this right over here the replicated storage then we're going to find the remote events and finally the rebirth event so local remote events equals replicated storage wait for child remote event and then from that we're going to go in and do local rebirth um event equals remote events wait for child rebirth there we go guys okay so now we found the rebirth um remote event over here after that we're going to actually get the local player so local players equals game get service players because this is in a local script we are able to go ahead and get the local player from the players we can't do this in a service script guys because it's not specific for one person this local script runs for every single different person in the game therefore we can actually find the local player without having to do any like special events over here so local player and um, equals players dot local player and then we're going to go ahead and do local leader stats um equals player wait for child and then leader stats right now guys there we go after that we're going to go ahead and do rebirth um button dot mouse button one up uh connect function and then from there we're going to go ahead and do local clicks equals leader stats dot clicks um dot value dot value over here guys there we go um sorry that's a minus sign don't know why i've done that so essentially guys what we are doing we are finding out how many clicks the person has therefore we can check if the person has enough clicks to afford the cost of how many rebirths this is um right okay this is for future but we're gonna add the rebirths in here so local rebirths equals leader stats dot rebirths um dot value um over here guys okay so we've got that right now after that we're gonna go ahead and do local rebirths amount um equals two number brackets rebirth um button dot name right now guys so essentially what we are doing here we are converting the name of the rebirth button which is one this is actually a string guys because names of um things are strings we're actually converting this to a number which is one and that's just going to be the amount of rebirths that we get awarded whenever the player buys this rebirth option after that we're going to go ahead and set the cost local cost equals 100 right now guys you can change the cost per rebirth but essentially in future videos we'll be changing the cost depending on how many um rebirths the player has let's say the player has 10 rebirths the cost would let's say be 200 instead of 100 guys but the base amount will be 100 and i'll show you guys exactly how you can change the cost depending on how many rebirths the player has after that we're going to go ahead and do local gems given equals rebirths amount and um, rebirths amount times 10 what we're doing over here guys so let's say 
Well, this one is, for example, one rebirth. We would be awarded 10 gems per rebirth, guys. Let's say with 100 rebirths, we would get 1,000 gems. And the reason why we are not just doing 10 here and rebirths amount equals 1 is because later on, once the player buys more rebirth buttons, which I'm not going to show you guys in today's video because that's going to be far too long, um, we'll be able to go ahead and just change the amount of rebirths that they're buying depending on how many um, how many rebirths are in the title or in the name of the button that they've clicked, if you guys know what I mean. Anyway, over here, so what we're going to go ahead and do, if clicks um, is greater than or equal to um cost then rebirths um event by a server um and then rebirths amount gems given what we've done over here guys we've now fired the server which will be covered in a second um we've fired we've told the server how many rebirths to award the player and also how many gems to give the player guys so now that we have done that let's go ahead and code this thing over here so in server script service i'm going to add a new script and i'm just going to name this rebirth over here guys there we go over here i'm going to gonna quickly copy and paste all the stuff over here guys because that's the exact same and now i'll show you guys what to do so we're going to go in and do rebirth event dot on server event connect um, function and then in here guys we need to add some parameters so player um, which is the player that of course has just fired the event um, rebirths amount um, which is of course the amount of rebirths that has been called um, has been sent to the server and also gems given okay guys so we got this right now next we're going to go ahead and do local um, leader stats equals player um, if I can spell player dot leader stats right now, guys. Um, there we go. So the reason why we can actually get the player here is because it knows what player has actually invoked the server. So essentially, we can just then find the leader stats of that player. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and do leader stats um, dot clicks dot value equals zero. Um, and what this is doing whenever they buy a rebirth it's going to reset that clicks to zero of course and then after that we're going to do leader stats dot rebirths value um dot value equals we, we actually want to put this again plus the rebirths amount if we were just to put the rebirths amount let's say the player already had 1000 rebirths and we just actually deleted this over here it would actually reset it let's say they only put one more rebirth it would just reset it all the way down to one that's why we do need to add that amount onto the amount of rebirths the player already has same if gems which is what we're going to do in a second leader stats dot gems dot value right now guys equals leader stats dot gems um dot value plus the gems given Okay, we've got this right now, guys. All we need to do is then just edit one final script and this should all be good to go. So over here, guys, what I'm going to go ahead and do, we're going to get the leader stats over here. So leader stats um, equals player, wait for child, um, and then leader stats. Honestly, guys, I'm going to change the name of the script, not um, from multiplier giver, just a multiplier because we're starting to move in into some different stuff over here sorry guys what have i just done um local leader stats there we go guys so local leader stats is that and then from there we're going to go ahead and do um so multiplier dot value instead of just resetting it as one just for the example that we put for the first episode we're actually going to do in brackets leader stats dot rebirths dot value plus one and this actually may not work all the time because this may run before the rebirths value has actually been loaded on to the player. So when you load in, of course, for the leader stats thing, it actually needs to load in the amount of rebirths that the player has. But you actually start off with zero for everyone. So this may sometimes be zero. That's why we actually need to do here leader stats dot rebirths dot changed um changed um connect function. And then we're going to go ahead and do here the same thing right now. There we go. So what exactly is happening here? Whenever the player's leader stats value um, actually gets changed, then we'll actually um, call this function. Function, And this should all be working right now, guys. Nice and smoothly. Let's test this all out. Should be good to go. So we need to go ahead and get ourselves 100 clicks. Maybe I should have, you know, 
I know what to do. We're going to cheat a little bit, guys. <laughs> right, okay. Anyway, clicks, set this to 100 right now, guys. There we go. Put this back to the client. And then from there, we're going to go in and click on that right now, guys. Rebirth. Oh, no. Right, let's see what... I know, I know. Right, now. okay. Never mind, guys. I accidentally put rebirth instead of rebirths. Rebirths, there we go, guys. Instead of that, that should be good now. Um, right, let's try this again. Hopefully, this works. So, we got our... Um, Sorry, where is... Yeah, there it is. Um, let's try this again. Leader starts, clicks, 100. 100, there we go. And then back to that. Let's try this again, guys. Rebirth is not... Uh, I've... Yeah, it's... Wait, what? Rebirth is not a valid member. Oh, never mind, guys. There we go. Okay. Hopefully, for the third time now, this should be working. If I could actually spell correctly, it would have been working before, but yeah. Um, I highly recommend also, guys, just to have the output window opening. Find that on the VTAB. Select out output, and then you can easily see whenever errors occurs. Um, because that's just going to make your life a lot easier when fixing bugs whenever they occur. And just identifying where they, where they actually come from. Anyway, guys, let's try this for the third time. Please work. There we go, guys. So now we have one rebirth and 10 gems. And if we actually click right now, guys, we only get, we actually get two clicks instead of, um, instead of one click. And if you actually go ahead and rebirth again over here, now that we're getting two clicks, it's a lot easier to get 100 gems, uh, 100 clicks. There we go, guys. We've got two rebirths now, 20. And per click, we now get three, guys. So our multiplier is racking up. And this is good, guys. And now if we just stop this and then. Hopefully, if it stops and then come back into the game right now, this should have all saved. There you go, guys. That is how you can pretty much do the rebirths feature, have the gems, and also the multiplier. We will be making this a lot more um, completed next episode, guys, where the player can buy rebirth buttons um, and it'll actually change. Yeah, it's just going to make it a lot better for you guys. We're going to, and maybe after that, we'll probably make like an upgrade shop. Of course, we want the areas. There's a ton of different features you guys, you guys may want in your clicker simulator games. And I'll be bringing them all to you in this series, guys. So smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. But I hope you all did enjoy this video. If you did, drop a like and subscribe to show some support. And peace out.